All right, everybody, welcome back here to the intermission show. Joey Pitt here joined for another edition of the Eagles Alumni Report. And I'm thrilled to be back here uh, spending some time with a guy who I spent a lot of time with during intermissions last season doing the very infamous Sochi's Corner segment. And that's the one and only former Eagles netminder, Michael Sochan, who joins me out from Robert Morris University in Pennsylvania. Now, Soch, you were Surrey's playoff MVP last year. You ended up playing your way into a con or into a commitment at the NCAA level, uh, going over to Robert Morris University. You haven't got a lot of playing time overall to start as a freshman goaltender, but what has the experience been like for you at the NCAA level? Well, firstly, it's just you learn so much. Um, you know, I have two graduate goalies in front of me and um I, I've just been kind of soaking it all in uh trying to learn as much as I can um you know those guys have done it for now five years uh both of them and um each bring something new each day and um you know that's kind of the main takeaway from this year is you know it's going to be open next year, but just learn, learn as much as I can this year and um, take it all in and enjoy it because it's going to go by quickly once things get ramped up in the later, later years to come. So you talk about the learning experience that came with this first year in the NCAA, you did manage to get into one game back early at the start of the year. You played the last 10 minutes of the third period of play uh, a perfect 10 minutes, might I add, as Sochan is perfect in NCAA play. That said, overall, in that 10 minutes of play that you managed to get, what was the level of compete like when you compare college hockey to the BCHL? I mean, obviously, it's definitely a step up because that's kind of the the natural progression. But um, honestly, I didn't feel like out of place, if that kind of makes sense. Um, it I was definitely kind of a little worried about it going into it at first, uh, just not knowing kind of what the speed is like and where I'm at with it. But um, no, it's not as big of a jump as people probably would think. Um, I think it's a lot more of the mental side because, you know, you're obviously back at school and you're just, you have to learn how to time manage a lot better than you do in juniors and, um, it's just a, it's a lot more of a routine based, uh, game. And even, even on the ice, it's, it's a very systematic type game and, um, uh, you, you've just got to be at your best. Um, so, um, that is kind of thing I learned. I mean, obviously I like to kind of brag and say, yeah, I'm eight for eight in uh, NCAA play, but obviously that's only for 10 minutes. Now, one thing that Lucas Chelly and I used to talk about on the broadcast last season was how crazy your story was in your route to even getting to the Surrey Eagles to begin with, as your your 21-22 was quite tumultuous to say the least. You had your hand in quite a few cookie jars around North American hockey. Uh, it eventually led to you being cap in hand coming to Coach Cam Keith asking for a chance do you just want to walk us through how, what led you to finally making your way to South Surrey and lacing up for the Eagles? Yeah, it, it was a journey to say the least. Um, I was moving probably once, every, I think I averaged once every three or four weeks. Um, that first year juniors um, played for six different teams and moved seven different times. I think it's the number. Um, but honestly, um it definitely prepared me. Uh, I think it made me definitely a lot stronger. Uh, and it's prepared me for the role that kind of this year, um, you know, because it, it, it's a lot of mental, um, and you just kind of have to find a way. Um, but leading into Surrey, um, you know, it, it's the power of an email. Um, it's actually happened for me twice. Uh, you know, my last year of 18s, it was the same thing. And then uh, going into my last year of juniors, I, I just sent an email to Cam. I was like, hey, can uh, um, you know, a little bit about myself? And uh, um, basically it was like, I, I really would be interested in playing for the Surrey Eagles. And uh, sure enough, 
he had a goaltending spot open and reached back out. And kind of the rest is history with that. This year, obviously, the big learning curve playing behind two veteran goaltenders. Obviously, when you came to Surrey, you were in a similar situation, but not quite the same as you and Eli Pulver were the same age going into last season. Or pardon me, you were one year older than Eli going into last season. That said, Eli, much more of a veteran in the BC Hockey League. So when Eli eventually went down with injury, you were thrown right into the fire there. Uh, I remember your first uh, weekend back with the team was the uh, the fateful trip up to the Kootenays. Your first game back between the pipes was a big 6 nothing loss to the Cranbrook Bucks. Um, that said, it was your first time between the pipes in over two months at that point. Do you have any memories of that trip up to Cranbrook and Trail? Because you ended up having to play the next night following uh, the early first period polling of Ben Montgomery. Yeah, so... Uh... Um, I, I very, very, or very much remember that trip. Um, I was actually just coming off my injury, uh, where I broke my finger and I remember I maybe only had like two or three practices before then. Um, and so, um, yeah, no, uh, I remember, uh, our goaltending coach, uh, he was saying, um, that, you know, I want you just to be thrown into the fire. I don't really care what you give up and blah, blah, blah. You just, you just gotta, it's going to be bad, but you just gotta put yourself into it. And I'm sure enough. Yep. He was definitely right. <laughs> um, but um, no, I, I remember that because I remember the game and trail. It felt like the, the turning point for me and in, um, in the season and kind of, I knew that was going to be the, the point where I was like, yep, this is where it's going to, I'm going to make this happen. You know, it, it's funny you bring that up because I remember uh, post game after the trail game being up in a, a hotel room with uh, Matt Dawson and former trainer Steph Pinto and Maddie saying jokingly, oh, yeah, so till let in three tonight. He's back. Uh, <laughs> a week later, you got your first win back between the pipes. That was March 19th against the Victoria Grizzlies which was a big one for me personally, because that was the day I shaved my head for wigs for kids. Now, I have a bone to pick with you, Michael Sochan. You were the only member of the Eagles who stayed in the dressing room during the haircut ceremony. What's the deal with that? I wasn't the only one, for one. Um, for two, um, we had no idea what was going on. We didn't know if we were supposed to go out or if we were supposed to stay in. Um, and I remember Jake was the one who let us let a bunch of the guys out. Um, but I just, I don't know. I was remembered that I was just still kind of focused on just the game itself. No, 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 nothing personal against you, but, uh, um, no, cause I, like you said, I was still trying to get on my feet with back with the, in the wind column. And so, um, but no, nothing personal. Um, I remember, uh, getting to watch it, um, on social media after the game so I didn't, I didn't miss it following that the Eagles went into the Fred Page Cup playoffs in the spring of 2023 the opening round with the Powell River Kings you kicked off your BCHL playoff career with a big shutout against Powell River in game one on home ice at South Surrey Arena do you have any big memories of any of the big stops or just the energy that the crowd was giving you from your play between the pipes that night um, I don't really remember kind of like what I was feeling, but I do remember I was just like, I want to make sure we set the tone early. It was kind of my, I didn't want to leave them any glimmer of hope. They were, they were actually a solid team. Um, you know, they, I think they had a very similar goals for total than with we did. And I remember that was kind of their pre-scout was that they still had a good offense and, you know, um, we needed to attack their defense and, um, I just wanted to kind of shut down their offense early. Um, and I remember the environment, though, was pretty electric because first playoff game, I remember it, I'm pretty sure it was almost sold out, if not sold out. And, um, you know, that, that place gets loud if it's sold out. And it's just it was a lot of fun to be a part of. And especially having a shutout to start the playoffs is, is always fun, too. 
You mentioned how loud that place can get during the playoffs. Uh, last weekend here at the South Surrey Arena was the Surrey return of Trent Wilson. And uh, obviously, if you think about Willie, the first thing that has to come to mind is his overtime, his double overtime winner, rather, in game two against the Alberni Valley Bulldogs. You're at the other end while that's all happening. Do you remember the elation that ran ac- like as you darted across to jump into that pile along the left side boards? I, I do remember, yes. Um... I remember I wasn't having my best game. And so when he scored it late, it was pretty fired up. And I knew from that point, I was like, we have to win this game. And so it just made it sweeter that he got the second one as well in overtime and or his second one in overtime. And um, yeah, no, it, it's a memory that I will remember forever. And I always know, or I always tell my teammates, we always celebrate the goal scorer. When an OT winner happens, not the goalie. So, uh, but uh, Trent Wilson is going to be joining us here at RMU for the next couple of years. So we're excited to bring him in. Uh, I want to <laughs> wrap up a uh, with, with a, a bit of a fun one here. So one of the things that happened uh, after you came back, but before your uh, before the playoffs started was you, myself, and Lucas Chelly made our way down to BC Place Stadium in downtown Vancouver to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, I was originally going to make a playoff graphic at the start of the second round of Soch's record since the Chili Peppers concert because you were one loss going into round two since the Chili's concert, or uh, yeah, since the Chili's concert. So that said, I want to wrap up with a question about you and me because. Obviously, we had a recurring intermission segment together in Soch's Corner. Do you remember what the initial response was on your half when a broadcaster who you'd talked to maybe three times before this came up to you and said, hey, do you want to do a recurring segment on games you don't play? Actually, I think it didn't it stem from when I broke my finger and you wanted me to bring me up into the booth in Chilliwack. I think that's how it started, right? Or was it before then? No, I had back when uh, you and Eli were playing off and on every other game. I thought it'd be fun to have you who was sitting. Wait, on the bench. I remember this conversation now. It yes. was when you were you even mentioned you were like, let's like mic you up and like interview you on the bench. <laughs> I remember that now. Yes. Yeah, so right. That started okay. in Powell River. That started on the Powell River trip. Yes. Where myself and uh, former director of media, Josh DeBook, tried to mic you up on the bench. And we had it working, and then we realized we couldn't find a way for you to be able to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember that. Yep. Okay. Yes. Um, no, I I I remember my just initial reaction is just I I just love I don't want to say like I I just love being involved. Um, I guess is the way to say it. And I knew when you asked me that, I was like, yeah, absolutely. That's gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, did I turn? Did I think it would turn to what it was and have, you know, a lifelong friendship and a lot of fun throughout the year? No, but like, will I ever change it? Absolutely not. So I had a great time with it, um, you know, and uh, I yeah, I, I, I just love. I mean, even when Josh was was with the team and we did a bunch of stuff too, um, no, it. it it's just fun. I don't know. It's hard to kind of put into words. I know that's kind of a lame answer, but I just enjoyed every second of it. So I'm glad we we decided to do that. Well, I'm hoping that you'll be able to uh, sneak your way over to the West Coast again and uh, maybe creep up across the border for a game or two in the postseason. It'd be great to see you. But uh, Michael Sochan, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this edition of the Eagles Alumni Report. Uh, tune in next time when I'm going to be joined by uh, the other half of last year's dynamic duo. Uh, the Cook Cole Galata will be joining me from Sacred Heart University. So uh, much like last time uh, when I was interviewing Matt, he has no idea that he's my next guest. I'm just assuming he's <laughs> going to say yes. But <laughs> folks, thanks for joining me for another edition of the Alumni Report here on the Intermission Show. My name is Joey Pitt. We'll talk to you later.